Hop, hop. Okay, ready? Mm -hmm. <coughs>
But having intentional time is the main factor. Right. And so when you're spending all of your time trying to do some cool thing and find the coolest thing to do rather than just being like, hey, let's put down our phones and look at each other and talk to each other. <laughs> like that's just as good. So. But we still did some fun things. We went to a lot of Broadway shows and that kind of fell under that realm. We went to Top Golf. Okay. What happened? How do you feel about that? Uh, I feel okay. <laughs> Which is super fun. The apartment that we just moved into is right across the street from Top Golf, and so that's a very fast, fun date that you we can go on. It's a good one too because you can suck at golf and it's still fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we both suck at golf. Also, Discount Tuesdays. Just yeah. saying, it's expensive. Never expensive. One. <laughs> Less recently, we went on a hot air balloon with Emma's family. That was really fun. Something we'd never done. This summer, we were both in a play together. We did Matilda. It was really cool to be in a show together because mm -hmm. it's something Emma's always done and something I did a couple of times in high school. But to be able to do it together and see each other perform and stuff. I think it was really fun. Made us spend a lot more intentional time together. Even just like driving to rehearsals was yeah. like, oh, this could have been time spent apart. Instead, it's time blasting BTS. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing we did was our apartment complex has an arcade game <laughs> of NBA Jam. So we played it one night and then I was like, we got to keep playing this because <laughs> it was like a childhood game I had. So we went back and we played it till we beat all the NBA teams. We've never really played video games before, but that kind of led us down a route to get other Switch games. So now we have a couple of other games to play and try to beat. It's kind of fun. We suck at video games too. So bad. Our apartment complex is growing. There are like a bunch of new residents moving in. I just really hope that we can keep our number one and number two spot on that game because <laughs> if true. we don't, I don't know. I don't know what we're gonna do. I'm done playing that game. <laughs> Get I like forgot that existed until you said that. I was like, oh yeah, that, that's the closed chapter of my life that I finished like a month ago. Another thing we did recently is, is went skiing. <laughs> Cold day. Cold day. And skiing is kind of new for me and something that Emma's done a lot growing up. It's nice to be on the same level as someone when you're doing an activity together in a relationship. It's also fun to see what they enjoy and you know, be willing to learn with them. When one of them is better, when one of us is better than the other at something, I think we do an okay job at trying to let them learn and grow and get there. I feel like it goes a little bit beyond just these like kind of structured things that we've done together as a couple. During the pandemic, I also had a real moment of just realizing like, there are a lot of things that I say I love to do that I don't necessarily do. Like I've always said like, oh, I love to sing or like, oh, I love being in plays or even like I love doing yoga. And it's like, okay, if I love those things, why am I not doing them? Is it because I don't love those things or is it because like for some reason I've decided that just loving them isn't a good enough reason for making time for them. And so I, I kind of had like, what I like to think of as a renaissance like a year ago where I decided to take voice lessons again even though it like felt like it wasn't for any reason other than just because I wanted to do that. I've been trying to learn French on my own, which lately I have not, but at the time I was. We did Matilda together, like he said, and I'm in another play now. I started a bookstagram account, just like lots of different things that bring me a lot of joy, that kind of make me feel like I'm living a richer, more full life. And I found that a lot of the time, the times when I'm the most unhappy, or even just like the least fulfilled, are when I'm like hyper-focusing on just one thing instead of caring for the whole person, exercising and like feeling intellectually stimulated and being productive at work and spending time with friends and family, all of that. That was a bit of a tangent, but I feel like that for my personal like culture growth, that was major. Yeah, I think the main thing is that what you said is just because you're not gonna like make a career out of something or like be really good at it, whatever, doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. So those things that you enjoy even if you're bad at them, go do them. Enjoy them. Because 
our culture is so like you go to school and you pick a major or a career and you just stick with it and it feels like you're saying no to everything else, but that doesn't have to be the case. You can do lots of fun things. And honestly, when I think of that, um, the queer eye person I think of is Jonathan Van Ness. I read his memoir and like half of it was about ice skating and gymnastics. And it's like, he's not an ice skater or a gymnast, but those are kind of the things that bring him a lot of joy and like make his inner child happy and yeah, you know, make, make him feel alive. And he makes time for them, even though obviously they're not what he's famous for. They're not what's making him money. So yeah. Well, that's it for culture. Uh, tune in real soon when we finish off this queer eye with our last apartment tour. Bye.